Gynecogenesis occurs within the testis. So, let us see what happens within the testis. This is the longitudinal section. I will show you a little part, small portion. LS, longitudinal section of the testis. LS of testis. I will show you a small portion. Okay. This uh, the outer part. Here are the testicular lobules. Testicular lobules. Just recall the testis is divided into many lobules. The tunica albuginea that invaginates and make the lobules, compartments. And within which the seminiferous tubules, highly convoluted seminiferous tubules, they found within the lobule. Tubules. Found within the these compartments. Then maybe in each compartment, as we know, one or two or one or two or three or four seminiferous tubules are present. These are convoluted, and the extent is. They extend is straight tubules. I am showing only one one seminiferous tubule in the compartments. They extend is the straight tubules. The straight tubules they in the posterior that straight tubules or tubule erecti they form a network. A network of thin tubules on the posterior part of the testis, the straight tubules they merge and form the network of thin tubules called reti testis. Just recall this portion posterior part is reti testis. Reti means network. And from the reti testis, what arises? Vasa efferentia. Vasa efferentia, they arise. How many? Around 15 to 20 vasa efferentia arise. And they anastomize or combine to form a single muscular duct called epididymis which is about 6 meter length present in a coiled manner posterior to the testis. This is epididymis already we have studied. Now let us focus on the seminiferous tubule within which spermatogenesis takes place. So, let us enlarge a cross section of the seminiferous tubule. Just I am showing you a enlarged proportion of seminiferous tubule. The cross section. A large cross section. I have to keep space this side. So, I am showing a, a large portion of the seminiferous tubule. 
of which we have already discussed within the TS of testes. We have discussed already in the TS of testes while studying the male reproductive system. Suppose here, here, hence many seminiferous tubules are there, which are having the dividing end. The seminiferous tubule are lined by germinal epithelium. The germinal epithelium consists of dividing, some dividing and some non-dividing cells. The dividing cells are the stem cells for which just we were discussing before this that the primordial germ cells, they arise from the endoderm of yolk sac and enter into the gonad. They remain near to the basement membrane. And this one is the basement membrane. This is the basement membrane. And these are the dividing cells. And there are some non-dividing cells called large non-dividing cells. They are Sotoli cells. They are large, elongated Sotoli cells. These are the elongated sotoli cells. Why I am showing like this? These uh, sotoli cells are present beside the dividing Actually, you see, we have discussed the Sortoli cells, the adjacent Sortoli cells have the tight junction. That means their cytoplasmic extension is there. Cytoplasmic extension is here. The one, the, uh, the Cytoplasmic extension means the side, uh, the cells are extended along with the cytoplasm. Like this. Suppose a part of the, this cell, this sotoli, is extended towards this and the one part of the, this sotoli cells is extended and actually they are covering these are dividing cells they make the tight junction by joining the cytoplasmic extension the cytoplasmic extension of Adjacent Sotoli cells make the tight junction and these are the stem cells as I had told you the PGCs after entering into the primordial germ cells after entering into the gonads they become the specific gametogonia. Here the PGCs within the male within the male gonad they become the spermatogonia. But exactly, this spermatogonia 
are the spermatogonial stem cells. They remain as the stem cells, spermatogonial stem cells near the basement membrane. Here even we know that the basement membrane, near the basement membrane, even the myoid, muscle-like myoid cells are also present. Which help in this myoid-like cells or muscle cells. Myoid means stands for muscle. Are also present. Helps in contraction of the seminiferous tubule to propel or the, to push the sperms formed within it into the epididymis. When sperms are formed within this, then they are propelled into the epididymis by the contraction of these muscle cells, myoid cells. Anyway, then what happens? At puberty, this spermatogonia. But I told that when PGC is enter into the gonads, testes, then they become the spermatogonial stem cells. PGC is mitotically. By mitosis, they divide mitotically. By mitosis, they produce the spermatogonial stem cells. The spermatogonial stem cells, they divide into different type of two different type of cells two different type these are some cells like similarly the spermatogonial stem cells we can say ssc some the some of the spermatogonial stem cells again they divide and produce sscs but some others, like which are also known as type A in higher class you will study, type A cells. And some other spermatogonia, they are, I will tell spermatogonia, which are also known as type B. Type B. This type B actually enters into the meiosis. Meiosis, the reductional division, they enter into the meiosis. That is the spermatogenesis. That is type B spermatogonia. The type A spermatogonia, that means again they become the stem cell. They remain as the stem cell to produce the functional spermatogonia. When it is required in the later stage. Anyhow, these are these are the stem cells they produce spermatogonia, but some of them again remain as the stem cell, but some some other they enter into these are the type B cell or the other kind or the functional spermatogonia. These are dermat, inactive, they only remain as stem cell. What is stem cell? The stem cell means the cell which has the capacity to produce different kind of cells. No, not only of its own kind, even the different kind. You see, here this stem cell produces, divide and produce its own kind as well as other kind. This is also, if this one is type A, we can see this one is also type A. So, it can produce its own kind, even the other kind. The other kind, type B, which are also known as type B, or functional spermatogonia, they enter into meiosis. Now, what happens here? Let us see. Okay, these are the spermatogonial stem cells. The, first of all, PGC is mitotically divided to produce these stem cells, spermat SSCs, spermatogonial stem cells. And they divide into different kind. Their own kind and the other functional spermatogonia. At puberty, these spermatogonia enter into the meiosis and how only it 
grows in size by absorbing the nutrient from the surrounding from the surrounding and it becomes by growing in size it becomes the primary spermatocyte i am writing down this is called germinal epithelium this one is spermatogonia remember the cells the dividing cells of germinal epithelium they are nothing but spermatogonial stem cells these are nothing but ssc spermatogonial i am writing down over there spermatogonial stem cells where as they divide to different kind that is own kind ssc and the functional spermatogonia why i am repeatedly telling you functional spermatogonia because they enter into the functional spermatogonia enter into the meiosis and how without division when they enter into the meiosis they grow in size and known as these are known as primary spermatocyte cyt site means cell spermatocyte then when these primary spermatocytes divide they complete the first maturation division they become secondary spermatocyte each becomes two secondary spermato site understood each primary spermatocyte after completing the first meiotic division they become secondary spermatocyte then secondary spermatocyte they become after completing the second maturation division they become the sperma tail on the spermatid what are these from the secondary spermatocyte one secondary actually i am not able to show you here suppose one secondary spermatocyte after dividing they produce each produce is secondary spermatocyte produce two spermatids two spermatids these are spermatid we will discuss in detail after one just i am showing you what happens within the seminiferous tubule that is i told you the spermatogenesis the process of spermatogenesis or the process of formation of sperm occurs inside the testis that is exactly within the seminiferous tubule what happens how it occurs then these spermatids differentiate into sperms these are immature sperms and so when they are formed they remain attached to the sotoli cell what are these green large cells these are the sotoli cells you see these sotoli cells and 
some other Leydig cells are present. Sotoli cells are present within the seminiferous tubule, whereas the Leydig cells are present outside the seminiferous tubule. In between the seminiferous tubule, because I uh, just recall what I told, these are the seminiferous tubules. So, in between the seminiferous tubule, in the interstitial space, what is interstitial? The space in between two structures is called interstitial space. In the interstitial space, within the connective tissue, the other important structures of cells are present. These are Leydig cells. These cells are called Leydig, named after the scientist, Leydig cells. The Leydig cells and Sotoli cells are named after the scientist. The Leydig cells secrete the very important androgen, the most important androgen, male sex hormone. It secretes now, these Leydig cells secrete testosterone. Where is this? Sotoli cells secrete. The Sotoli cells secrete. These are the Sotoli cells. The Sotoli cells secrete androgen binding protein, ABP, just recall. We have studied in previous video of the male reproductive system. The Sotoli cells secret ABP. The Leydig cells secret testosterone. ABP androgen binding protein. Androgen binding protein helps in increasing the testosterone concentration within the seminiferous tubule. Because they are not capable to concentrate within the seminiferous tubule, testosterone denser. The testosterone uh, concentration increase by the help of androgen binding protein. That's why its name is ABP, androgen binding. It binds with the testosterone. This protein binds with the testosterone, which is secreted by the Sotoli cells under the influence of FSH. Okay. This ABP helps the increase of testosterone, whereas this testosterone, this increase the testosterone. And testosterone influence this process. This, all these processes, it helps. That is how the primary spermatocyte completes the division and becomes secondary spermatocyte. Secondary spermatocyte becomes spermatid. Then spermatid is differentiated into, transformed into the sperms. Okay, these are the sperms. All are influenced by testosterone directly. These are sperms. The, means the whole spermatogenesis, the process of uh, sperm formation, spermatogenesis is influenced by testosterone. So it is called the most important androgen. And it is the Sotoli cell has also very important role. The, we have discussed the, the Sotoli cells also known as a nurse cell or nurse cell or the sustentacular cell. Why not cell? The Sotoli cells are also known as not cell because they nurses. They nourishes the developing sperm, spermatozoa. The developing spermatocyte. They nourishes. They secrete the nutrient and they feed the these developing sperms. Okay, this is all what happens. Yes, another thing. This is the blood testis barrier. The basal lamina of the basement membrane, myolite cells and means not only this much, this much. This 
में था ब्लड टेस्ट इज बेरियर द टाइट जंक्शन दिस इज द टाइट जंक्शन दिस इज अ see i told you the cytoplasm the cellular extension the two adjacent sotoli cells the extension of the cytoplasmic extension of two adjacent sotoli cells make the tight junction here at the tight junction that means the tight junction of the adjacent sotoli cell the vessel lamina and the myelin extension these make the blood test is barrier blood test is what i told you in the previous video blood test is barrier barrier it obstructs the entry of the macro molecules into the lumen of the seminiferous tubule as well as it prevents the sperms to enter into the surrounding blood vessels because the blood vessels are here the blood vessels are also present surrounding the seminiferous tubule so they prevent the blood this uh, btb they prevent the diffusion of sperms here are the sperms the they prevent the diffusion of sperms into the blood stream which may which uh, will create the immune response of our in the, in our body immune response the immune cells may destroy if they enter into the seminiferous tubule they will destroy these sperms it is not good because sperms they are responsible for the production of offspring the sperms they participate in the reproduction when sperms are produced they are not to be only they are not only produced and remain within the uh, the testes they test from the seminiferous tubule the sperms are released and when the they, first of all they remain attached to the sotoli cells when they are released from the sotoli cells it is called spermiation already we have studied spermiation then they are released into the epididymis where they attain the maturity from the seminiferous tubule sperms from seminiferous tubule tubules they transported into the epididymis then they attain the maturity they gain more mitochondria over there they gain their the sperms in the epididymis they gain they make sperms sperms gain more mitochondria the flagella what is flagella if this is the sperm middle piece is there this tail it is the acrosome this tail is nothing but flagella the length of the tail increases increase of flagella by this they attain the maturity and they become capable to fertilize the ovum then during the ejaculation they are released exterior and they passing through from the epididymis they pass through vas deferens then into the ejaculatory duct then into the urethra 
then into the female reproductive tract where it can fertilize, where the sperm can fertilize it over.